Welcome to the Value Investor TV podcast. This is the podcast that helps you grow your wealth and become financially independent. My name is Beko and my partner, Hari. Hello. Uh, this episode is episode 47. Yeah, 47. Great. Uh, we're going to be talking about Ulta Beauty today. Uh, exciting company. It's really exciting. Um, you know, it's a field that I really don't know much about, but I've got to learn a lot about it through reading about it. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a quite good company, so yeah, we're excited to talk about it yeah. further. You want to do a little quick disclaimer? Yeah. Um, so you know everything that we talk about here is for uh, education and entertainment purposes only. Um, you know we don't know your financial situation, your uh, background, or your knowledge of these companies. So we encourage you to do your own research and use the this podcast just as a a, a way to uh, learn and to uh, entertain yourself. Perfect. Let's get this going. Yeah. All right. So, Becco, tell us uh, what does Ulta uh, do? The Ulta Beauty is a large retail store in the U.S. that sells a whole slew of beauty products. So they sell about 500 brands, and they have locations in all 50 states. Number of stores they have right now, uh, it's up in the thousands. Um, the last time I checked, thousand and. 160 uh, it's about 1100 i think 1100 yeah, yeah. A little with, over 1100. with their with their tw- they haven't published their 2018 annual report yeah. so the 2017 had a thousand 1100 1100 yeah, 11, around 1100 yeah. so yes they did th- so they didn't they didn't publish their 10k's but they do they did publish up on their on their financials yeah so we'll talk about we'll talk more about that um in just a minute so, yeah, so that that's what they do. Kind of going back to your questions about what they do. That's that's what they do. They do retail 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 for beauty products. Yep. So, if I could <laughs> paint a little bit more color on that. Yeah, not only do they do do retail, uh they do also salon service. So, that's kind of their core proposition is you come to our store, you ha- we have basically every slew of products that you're looking for all the way from wholesale all the way from yeah, not wholesale kind of mass product to to luxury item. And then on top of that, we provide you with sal- salon service. And so they do hair, skin, brow, makeup service, all right there within a store. So the value proposition for them is you come, you get everything right there and then. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, also their, their, you know, their e-commerce is growing. Uh, they, have, they have pretty sizable e-commerce uh, platform. What I thought was what, what I thought was really interesting about this company was, um, the 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 salon service aspect of it, um, but also their royalty programs. We'll talk about that more in detail later. But the royalty program is quite strong. Yeah. You know, we have three twenty three million active users, and ninety percent of their sales come from them. Think about that. Yeah. I mean, can you think of any royalty program that has that much? Well, I, I, and nobody even mentions how many, you know, what percentage of their sales comes from that because it's never as high as these yeah. guys. I mean, I, that that's a number to be proud of, right? It's, that's insane. Ninety yeah, percent of their total sales come from twenty-eight million active active member of their royalty program. Ultimate ultimate reward, as it's called. That's insane to me. <clears throat> yeah, and I think they also announced a new one too, where it's like a, yeah. a diamond. Diamond, yeah, exactly. Uh, diamond w- version where. I mean, it's a pretty high bar to set. You have to spend twelve hundred dollars yep. in in beauty. Yeah, in a uh, year. A year. A by year the way. Yeah, yeah, just to get to that tier. Yeah. So it's pretty incredible. Also, and we talked about. I just mentioned the e-commerce aspect of it. You know, every retail store, Amazon has kind of set the tone for all the e-commerce or all the retail giants. So they're also pushing for that three-day shipping, three days yeah. or less shipping. So they have tremendous focus on supply chains, making sure that everything's really running efficiently. You know, focus on distribution centers. They actually established one just last year at Fresno, California. That's their sixth one. They have one in, in Dallas, Indiana, and other places. That's a sixth one that they just established at, Fr- at Fresno, California. So, just really strong momentum on, on that on that front as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, tell us what what are the competitive advantages um, you know that you see based on on your knowledge here yeah so that that last part is, is important you know as as me i, I don't uh, go shop for beauty products so you i have you don't 
Uh, so I have limited knowledge about the space personally, yeah. but yeah. having having read through this report, I think their core proposi value proposition is a, a couple things. One is this is a place where you can come, like I mentioned before, this is a place where you can come and get everything you everything you need in one single place. Yep. You know, where can you find a store that has 500 brands spanning from mass market products all the way to luxury? And on top of that, that's number one. And two is you get those items and two, you can get these services like I mentioned, hair, skin, brows, all these services, you can get them right there in the store. Yeah, so I, I think it's it's important to to mention that nothing that they sell you can't you can buy everything that they sell somewhere else but you can't get everything that they offer in one place like except for ulta right so yeah. if you're coming to shop for makeup and you know baths bath stuff and also get a uh, a nail your nails yeah. done and stuff like that yeah. this is the only place that's going to do it all in one like yeah. you know it's a stop and go kind of yeah. you know setup so you know that i think is very advantageous for them yeah i think one thing that we were we kind of talked about yesterday was you know we talked about it in passing but if again you know we're venturing into the psychic the psyche of a of a of a person who shops in places like this yeah because we ourselves don't do it but i i think that there's a lot of stickiness when it comes to choosing your salon right yeah because when you go to a salon you make relationship with the person who's taking care of you you tend to just stick with them, right? And so you get that recurring revenue, ongoing revenue. And on top of that, not only do you go for a place like this, you have all these different options to buy stuff there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, from the business perspective, that's you know, very, very good. It's very, very much competitive advantage right there. Yeah, and also I think if you, you know, let's say you're in college or you're a you know, younger person, yeah. and then as your income grows, you don't actually have to leave the store, right? Yeah. You you stay in the same place because they have you know all the different lines you know from the the bear line to you know the premium lines mm -hmm. the luxury brands and yeah. so you you kind of there's a loyalty attached to to staying at that store that then I think grows with you as your income yeah. grows and you know and as your if your income falls you you know you you can still shop at the same place right? exactly um, now, a couple thing couple couple things you mentioned there. I want to talk about kind of income falling and in the context of recession. I want to talk about that. And then the second thing I want to talk about is kind of the technology portion. You talked about young person all the way to perhaps a senior uh, person shopping in places like this. And in that light, I want to talk about kind of the technology adoption, which yeah. is interesting. So let's talk about the kind of the recession aspect of it first. Or, you know, people who don't have much money or or when the recession hit, what 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 happens to a business like this? Yeah. So we actually looked at it, and it's interesting. Um, in 2008, you know, I think that's kind of what we think about recession in, in our in our age now. If we look at the year over year revenue growth, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at from 2006 to 2000, like, let's say 12, you see a jump from 2006 to 2007, and then from there it dips year over year over year. So in 2007, it peaks at 30% and it dips down to right about 10%. But that's still growth. Exactly. So that's that's what I want to mention yeah. here. It never shrank. It never goes down. This is year over year growth, revenue yep. growth. So it is going down. So you know, we can't dismiss the fact that people are not spending as much money as they were before. But the fact of the matter is they are growing and it's a sticky business. Yeah, I mean, you still got to look good even if the economy <laughs> doesn't look good. So. That's it's it. important. Yeah. So so that's the first uh, kind of thing I want to talk about there. On the second aspect of it, I want to talk about kind of technology aspect of it. And so they have this application called Glem Lab. So it's a it's a try on app where you can. I, I haven't used it, but from the description. How committed are you to this, <laughs> Becco? Come on, like. <laughs> you didn't thoroughly research this. Uh, if, you I did didn't, not. if you didn't I use did the app, sorry so guys, turn off the podcast right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> so this Glem Lab application, it's I, I imagine you, you take, kind of take a picture of yourself and you can try on different products that they have. Yeah. Um, you know, people do this with glasses. Yeah. And I've seen it with uh, what is it, Warwick Parker, and all these different glass makers. Uh, retail stores will have a, a place where you can take a picture of yourself 
and then put classes on you virtually and, and try it out. So they have similar similar technology. Yeah, and I think actually now <clears throat> they were mentioning it in the uh, uh, in the conference call that they actually are going to do that in real time, kind of like a Instagram filter. They would do that with makeup and stuff like that. So you could see yourself in real time with... So, like, as you move and smile, instead oh, of just a static picture. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So, <clears throat> you know, I mean, the way I see that, to me, is, you know, if you're going to Walgreens, you know, which they mentioned as a competitor or the department store, you don't have the ability to, to do that, right? So, um, or if you're buying your stuff on Amazon, yeah. right, you don't have the ability to try these things on in Amazon, you know, Amazon is just a place to go buy it. Yeah. So I, I think that does attract a certain amount of loyalty. Like, oh, I tried it on. I really like it. Click. And exactly. you know, it shows up three days later. So, I mean, I, I do think there's some, there's a strong sense. So let's, let's, uh, you know, sticking with our, our checklist here. Sure. Um, and by the way, if you haven't, uh, don't have a copy of the checklist, you can uh, email us at info at valueinvestor.org um, or uh, tweet us at valueinvestortv. Uh, and uh, we'll be happy to to send send you that. Um, so, do you think they have a a brand moat? Mm. I think so. I think they do. Yeah. Again, I'm trying to put myself in the shoe of a woman or man who are shopping at Ulta or looking for places to shop beauty products. I think they do have some brand well mo- I mean, but i think in, in light of that 90 percent loyalty yeah right i mean i i think that translate into that i mean that is the brand mode right is yeah. you have that loyalty card in your wallet yeah. or in your purse and if you're gonna buy that stuff are you even thinking about going to yeah a competitor right yeah so i guess i was more thinking about in the light in in the aspect of if i'm going out to buy if I'm a new entrant in this field, you know what is this? You know what 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 is it that attracts me to this place over others? But if I'm an existing user, I have been acquired as a user by yeah. Alta. I think the customer acquisition cost that's been paid out right. from the business end, and it's very easy for them to kind of reel it in, yep. you know, over and over and over again. Right. But if I'm thinking about kind of going back to your question about if I'm thinking about it from the perspective of a new entrant. You know, new customer in this in this field. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think the so br- again, brand recognition. That's number one. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Well, I, so I, you know, I, I think there's there are the other moats here. Yeah. But I, to me, you know, sure. and you tell me since you're the uh, you're now the expert on <laughs> Alta, um, although you didn't use the app, so I don't know how much <laughs> of an expert you are. It it the brand is. Kind of, I mean, uh, with a retail store, you don't really have many options for a moat, right? There is no network effects. Like, yeah. just because your friends use N- Ulta doesn't mean you're going to use Ulta. I yeah, mean, it, n- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's, not, not, not because like, like yeah. eBay or like yeah. Facebook, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only reason you use it is because your friends are on it, right? Yeah. That doesn't really apply. Like, you yeah. can buy these things elsewhere, right? Yeah. So, they're. You know, I, are there switching costs really associated with buying your makeup somewhere else or buying maybe with the salon, right? Salon, yeah, for sure. But not necessarily with the, product the itself. products itself, yeah. right? Uh, I don't think they're a low-cost provider in any, you know, in any stretch of the imagination, right? They are a... They do whole spectrum. Yeah. So, I, I mean, but they, I mean, they do can, they can buy in bulk, which helps. Yeah. But not necessarily the... Uh, and I don't think they have any intangible assets that really, you know, crush the competition. Yeah. So, but they're clearly, their sales are growing very fast. And I think it's durable because they have a strong loyalty. Yeah. Right? So. For sure. So, I, I mean, brand seems to be their, their moat. Yeah. Right? So. For sure. Yeah. I think the, I think the prop, the value proposition translates nicely into, into the, the moat that you're talking about, the brain moat. Yeah, yeah. Cause I mean, it's, I think you bring up a good, you know, teaching point here which is brand you know a moat is not just the um you know to drive new sales yeah. right it's also protecting existing sales. existing sales yeah, right exactly. so you want to be able to have it what you know 
I call I, I don't know what the right term is. I I've said legacy moat. Sure. Um, is to protect your your business, right? Is to keep the people that are already your customers coming back, yep. right? Because obviously, ninety percent of their sales are coming to existing customers. The last thing they want to do is piss off their existing customers, yep. right? Yep. So I think that's where the the moat here is. Yeah. yeah, your your brand is what keeps you coming back. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, on, on that on that light, I want to mention a couple things. So you talked about how you want to make sure, from the company's perspective, co- comp- from the company's perspective, you want to make sure that your users, your customers, are keep coming back. And I think a big part of that is making sure that when you walk into the store, it looks nice, it feels fresh. Yeah, and so on, on that light, you know, they're not only opening new stores, but also they're putting a lot of emphasis on remodeling their yep. existing existing stores. So for 2019, I just want to drop some of these facts here. 2019, they're looking to remodel about 20, about 20 locations. Remodel slash relocate, um, 20 20 locations. And also, this is something that I wanted to talk about earlier on, but didn't get a chance to. If you look at their kind of top line breakdown up on. Because we mentioned, you know, the salon service, all these different products. And so if I could just shine some light on exactly how much of their revenue comes from these different places, really only about 5% of the revenue comes from the salon service itself. Mm-hmm. And the and the great majority comes from actual products such as cosmetics. Cosmetics accounts for about 51% of their, of their sales. Skincare, bath, fragrance, that's a separate, separate category, about 21%. And then hair products slash styling tools, about 19%. So if you look at this breakdown, right, salon service itself, only 5%. And so from the company's perspective, it's really an investment you make to drive other sales. Yeah. You know, it's, the salon service itself is not a moneymaker. Well, I, I, I imagine that the way that they're booking that revenue is, um, you know, most of the money is going to the person who is doing the services. Yeah. Um, which is typically how they, you know, they kind of operate that. So, uh, you know, they may be only collecting a small fee yeah. from that, but they're using that as a lead edge to get you into the store. Yeah. And once you're in the store, hey, you know, I'm going to try out this exactly. shampoo or whatever. And then you, you know, then you go in and buy and I'm like, oh, while I'm here, I'll get all this stuff. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it you're right. I mean, it, it, it's a small percentage of their revenue, but I think it drives a lot of their other business. Exactly. So, um, exactly. And okay. then, yeah, these are these are some of the small facts. Um, salon service, a typical a typical Ulta. You can if you haven't been to one, I haven't personally. Uh, salon service makes up about you know eight to ten salon professionals kind of make up make up a salon. Uh, kind of a team at an Ulta location. Just wanted to, you know, paint more color uh, on that one. All right, uh, Becco, let's uh, let's actually move on to this, uh, the competitive advantage. Uh, how, so how durable, you know, given all of the information that we have, um, you know, how, how durable do you think it is? Yeah. Um, yeah, like given, given what you talked about, in terms of the retention rate for the active active users, I think yeah. the the moat itself is, I think the moat itself is quite quite durable, right? And I, I want to pose a question to you. Yeah. Uh, let's say Amazon were to go into the space. Yeah. You know, let's say Amazon were to basically copy the business model of Ulta, and all of a sudden they have all these stores spinning out, and they basically are providing the same type of services. What 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 do you think? what happened there so I, I think it's hard for you know so ulta has been competing in this space for since 1990 right that was when the company is founded they have a lot of accumulated knowledge about hair beauty skin care you know salon services and and so on and so they know how to target their customer they know how to uh i mean 90 percent loyalty you know rates are insane right is. so so if I'm going to compete with them, Amazon has all the money in the world. You know, I I would try and emulate their business model as much as possible, but I don't know that there's a compelling reason for me if I'm already an Ulta shopper to switch, right? Yeah. I think that may be part of the problem here yeah. is that, you know, if you're trying to compete with these guys, 
you're going to have to have some compelling reason for you to switch between those two. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, I don't know that, you know, Amazon or, or really anyone else, if 29 people, I mean, that's 10% of the population mm-hmm. is buying from you. How are you going to get them, yeah. you know, away, yeah. right? I, and I, I, you know, oh, Amazon has the money. They have the technology. They could build all of this stuff. But they would. Ha- it would take them a long time just to get mindshare, right? Like it's, you know, when you, uh, there's 29 people who w- they think I need to buy something for, you know, cosmetics mm-hmm. or skincare. The, the only place they're looking is Ulta, right? Yeah. And uh, it's something that we, something that you talked about, you know, was that, that relationship, you know, it, it's a, it's a retail store that's built on relationship, you yeah. know, with that service component. Right. And it takes a, a long time to build that relationship out. And you talked about earlier on that this company has been around for 30 plus years. Yeah. And that, that relationship, the, these kinds of relationships can't get established in a matter of a year or two. Right. Especially for the number of people we're talking about here. Yeah. So I think kind of going back to your question, I think the, the durabil- durability of, of, of the company, of the moat itself is, is quite strong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's talk about their long-term prospects uh, and runway. Uh, what do you think, uh, you know, given they have 1,100 or so stores, uh, you know, tell us about how many, what their goal is in terms of store openings and so on. Yeah, they, I think, let me just double check before I miss speak yeah so they let's look at this chart really quick so they've been opening new stores for quite a long time um so it's the the data that we have in front of us right here 2015 to 2017 and 2018 they've been opening about 100 stores every year yep. and in 2019 they're going to kind of slow it down to about 80 new stores so the growth is very quite strong in terms of moving moving forward in the so all all of this growth is happening within the U.S. Right. So this is not uh, this is totally domestic company, but in terms of growth rate, I think it's. It, I mean, you can see that it's growing quite aggressively. It's probably not going to grow as aggressively as as it has in the past ten years, but I think the room for growth is is still there. Yeah. Well, so I I think the e-commerce is growing double digits. Exactly. You know, by itself. And what what I found astounding was like just their same store sales. Yep. So this is the same store. It's not any nothing new. Is growing organically by eight eight percent. So yep. you know they open up new stores, but they're also just getting more um, more people are buying more stuff at their existing stores. Yeah, which is pretty powerful, right? Yeah. You know that that's a fairly rare kind of feet to yeah. see from a retail company usually that number is like one or two percent and theirs is four or five times that so. exactly i want to mention co- one, one more thing on the growth rate on the growth prospect in terms of in the light of e-commerce you talked about so one of the things that was really interesting i think this applies to pretty much maybe not every retail sport re- retail uh, stores but for the, for these guys when people are shopping omni-channel customers right what that means is you're shopping not only online, but you're also shopping in retail stores. You're shopping in multiple channels. That's what it means, omni-channel guest. So um, omni-channel customers, for them, spend three three times as much as just retail stores customers. And so you're not only driving traffic to your website, but because of that, you're seeing all these services that you can get when you get to the store physically. So these customers who are landing on altabeauty.com, I don't know the URL, but landing on their website, they're they're in addition to purchase, purchasing whatever they whatever they need to online, they're actually going to the store for other products and services. So that's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for that e-commerce model because think about it: you you buy some cosmetics the first time you go into the store. Then the next six months, maybe you buy the same one, but you don't need to go into the store to get it, yep. so you can just order it on online. Yeah, right. I, I think there's there's a lot of, and they're tracking all these people, so they yep. they're able to tell us these granular stats, you know, because they have all the loyalty rewards uh, going on. So, exactly. All right, um, let's talk about the uh, capital to re- reinvestment. Uh, you know, does it require a lot of capital reinvestment to maintain? Um, it's it's business and you know how much can they grow you know if they didn't put any money back in 
you know, to the business, right? I think we kind of answered that second question with same store sales, you know, are eight plus percent, Mm -hmm. which is astounding. So, but you know, what about the, you know, how much does it cost to run a Alta store? Yeah. So in in that, in that perspective, um, you know, we have to look at, if you look at the cash flow statement and kind of look at the amortization slash depreciation cost uh, on a yearly basis, it's around on, if you look at on, on a, on a net, Net free ca- net cash flow from operation perspective, it's about thirty percent, thirty to you know thirty five percent of of net cash from operation is going out for for those kind of maintenance sort of uh, expenditures, and so about thirty percent is kind of the kind of the ballpark you're looking at there. Yeah, if you look at their the it it looks like it costs about a million dollars for them to open a new store. Yep. And so I think that that kind of tells you, you know, it's not a huge investment for a company who makes, you know, 700 million or so in cash flow from operations yep. for them to open up a new store. And then, you know, so remodeling that store probably costs, you know, somewhere, you know, south of, of that number. Yeah. It's not going to be the full million. Otherwise, they'd just abandon oh. the store and <laughs> yeah. open a new, a one. new so, one. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like to me that they're, I mean, it's not a, it's not a whole lot of money for them to, to, to maintain this business. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, keep, uh, keep on keeping on here. So, um, relationships that they have, you know, and I think this one is pretty, pretty yeah. easy to answer. Yeah. We you know, kinda, do they have good an- relationships with customers? Oh yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. We kind of, we kind of answer that one. Yeah. That's a definite. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have, it's hard to tell with their suppliers, but I imagine the suppliers are very happy with them. Yeah. Right. Cause they're making, yeah. They're a great avenue for them uh, you know, exactly. to sell. Um and well, employees, regulatory, any uh, any issues there? No, I, I didn't see any red flags around there. Um although I wanted I do want to say this about suppliers. I think it's the case for pretty much every retail stores. They don't really have like long top long term contracts. Yeah. Um but that's something that's kind of the risk that you take when you go into retail business, it looks like. So Yeah, but I think they have because they have so much share of the cosmetics market, like you're not going to, right. You know, w- walk yeah. away from a deal with yeah. Ulta even, and that may be to Ulta's benefit that they can, you know, push down, uh, you know, Walmart is notorious for doing that. Oh, yeah. they, they have no contracts and just force you to, you know, do whatever, crawl <laughs> through the hole that they ask you to. Yeah, so. exactly. That's the power of retail stores. Yeah. Right um, there. all right. Well, so that, uh, that, this is the first part of this, you know, episode. Um, when we come back, we'll be talking a lot more about uh, financials, um, management, and you know how to value the business. So, uh, why don't you close us out here? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, looking forward to the next podcast. Um, yeah. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Uh, uh, just one more thing: if you need our checklist, uh, you know, you can always contact us at info at valueinvestor dot org. Um, check us out on Twitter at value investor tv um you'll also get the benefit of our comments and you know um around you know relevant news topics and how they apply to value investing so uh encourage you to to give that a a follow so great all right guys we'll see you in the next one all right thank you